Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. You know, it occurred to me in the video that I recorded that talked about IoT, Internet of Things, and smart devices, and we focused on smart TVs. I kind of glossed over a lot of the specifics relative to the Raspberry Pi. I got some really useful commentary indicating that it might be useful to take more of an exploratory look at what's involved in setting up the Raspberry Pi and then following up along from that some of the software specifics, maybe a, a tutorial series of sorts. So with this video, we'll start that sequence. I happen to have one of these guys. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, and this is a kit that you can order off of Amazon. Uh, Kana kit to be specific. I think these are right around $80, maybe $90, and they come with a whole host of goodies. Uh, inside of here, you got a breadboard, you got all sorts of LEDs, obviously an HDMI cable, but in this video, we're going to focus on setting up the Raspberry Pi. We've got a little case here, and hopefully, maybe, although I've already done a piece on how to set up the SD card for the OS, depending upon how this flow goes, maybe we, we repeat that, but I'll be back in just a moment. back. So I've taken most of the items. That's not true. I've taken a couple of the items out of the big box that I showed you just a bit earlier. So why don't we focus on what we have now. So what you see in front of you is, of course, the Raspberry Pi itself. Here is the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. Looks like that's focusing okay. This kit includes a 32 gig SD card and it's inside. So be careful when you unbox this. My thinking is that the operating system, Raspbian, is already on this device. So there's really not a whole lot that you have to do in that regard. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll open that up in just a moment. What we also have is the uh, premium clear case for the Raspberry Pi. Um, another reason why it's good to get these kits and uh, they even provide a little installation video if you require that. Maybe redundant to what I'm doing. But uh, we'll first go ahead and open up the Raspberry Pi itself. I can figure out the best approach for that. Looks like uh, if we go in maybe from the top no, well, why don't we just go for the uh, area where it says open here, right? Go ahead and do that. And we have the SD card nicely protected in a little cellophane bag here. And of course, Sure you can see that we have the Raspberry Pi itself. So we'll go ahead and get that out. Put that down for just a second. We also have some safety instructions included here as well. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that box. Uh, so I think the first thing that I will do uh, is Again, keep this to the side, keep the SD card there, and then we will unbox the clear case. All right, put the box to the side here, and we've got our clear case. We're going to take it out of the plastic, put that to the side as well. 
and we have a nice uh, vented case, relatively clear, kind of kind of a smoky plastic if you ask me. But if we go ahead and uh, take a look at the side, you can see we've got opening for our uh, USB ports and the Ethernet here. In the back, we've got an opening for the SD card. Um, probably a good idea not to put the SD card in just yet as we need to get the board mounted into the case. This side we've got a slot or openings for our power, I think that's power or maybe three and a half millimeter audio, HDMI and uh, mini USB. Let's see if we can get this get this apart. go then we can take the pie and simply place that in like so and then with that mounted we can take the top of the case and we simply put it down like that may need a little more leverage to get that to clamp on, but I think you get the idea. There we go. All right, so that's put together nicely. As fit as can be. And now we will take the SD card out. Samsung 32 gig SD card. And we will go ahead and slide that in right here. Okay, and that uh, seems like it's nice and snug and in the right position. And so with that, we can now go ahead and connect our network. Turn that around for you. Connect our network. I've got USB, mini USB here. And what I'm also going to do is, uh, you notice this little guy here. This is a Mirabox uh, HD video capture card. I'm going to go ahead and connect, connect the HDMI out from the Pi to this guy which is feeding a monitor, but more importantly, I also have a uh, USB 3 cable here that I'm going to connect to the mirror box so that we get the output from the Pi in our video stream here. So I'll be back in just a moment. All right, we're back, and we actually have a little bit of a mess of cables here, but We'll try to uh, make the best of it. Let me go ahead and get the unboxing camera back into view here. All right, you see I've connected the HDMI to the mirror box. I've got the Ethernet connected. I've got the SD card in, which you saw previously. Now I'm going to apply power. Now, if my theory is correct, and that and this SD card already has the operating system on it, then we'll see a light internal to the case here indicating that the Pi will boot. If that is the case, then I will switch over to the mirror box and we'll actually get to see the, uh, the console for the Pi. I will also need to connect a keyboard to this guy, at least initially, to do some initial configuration. Uh, after that's done, I'll be able to connect to it over the network to finish the setup process. But let's go ahead and plug this in and see what we see. 
All right, so we'll uh, apply power. And you see we did get a light. So that is an indication that um, the device has found an operating system on the SD card and is now going through its boot process. Let's see if we can actually get a view of that on screen. All right, and we do see the uh, setup utility. And so let's see if I can. Uh, should have done this before the recording, but need to connect a keyboard. Give me just a moment. All right, I've got a keyboard connected. You can move up and down. As far as the operating system of choice, this Raspberry Pi is actually going to be a part of the solution that supports the um, audio visual receiver controller in my mom and dad's house so I won't need a graphical environment so with that in mind I'm going to choose to install Raspbian Lite and with that selected I'm going to press the letter I I think um, to begin our install and this is fine we want to proceed And now our installation is underway. And so this shouldn't take too terribly long. I will probably fast forward the video in any event, just so that you aren't waiting in any way. But uh, yeah, this is kind of what the process looks like. You notice that the keyboard language is currently set to English UK. Once we are in via the network, I'll go ahead and use the uh, Raspi config utility to change that to English US. I am currently powering the Raspberry Pi via the USB port on the computer that I'm using. And you see that lightning bolt that shows up in the corner every now and then. That is an indication that we are not getting quite the amount of power that the, um, that the Pi would like. With all the activity going on as a part of the install, we are... Uh, pulling just a bit more current than the USB port can provide. So would have been a better idea to plug it in to a wall-based transformer, but hopefully we get through this without any difficulty. Okay, the operating system has been installed successfully. I know I said I would uh, set the language after the fact, but let's see if we can do it now. Uh, maybe not. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit OK here. We'll let it restart. We see the four raspberries at the top. That's an indicator of the number of processing cores included in the CPU. So we've got a four core CPU here, much faster than the device featured in my previous video. And we see our first startup sequence. 
right, we'll go ahead and log in with our default cred credentials. And you can see um, on the console here, we are, we are getting that under voltage warning. Now I want to take a look at the network configuration. All right. And I've got my IP address on ETH0. At this point, you might think, all right, we can dispense with the console, go ahead and connect via the network. Not so much. We actually need to tell the Raspberry Pi to allow connections to come into it via the network. So I'll do that at the same time that I set the keyboard configuration. So we will go raspy config. Actually, I need to do sudo sudo short for super user do and we'll begin changing our options so uh, we'll go to interfacing options first and to enable connectivity over the network I'm going to enable SSH all right the SSH server is now enabled and as far as my keyboard is concerned. I'm going to change the keyboard layout next. And I happen to be using an Apple keyboard. Okay, and I will also change my time zone. All right. And with that, we are finished almost finished this part of the setup there's a two-step process required for enabling connectivity over the network particularly if you want it to be active each time the Raspberry Pi boots so our next step we're gonna do sudo again System control. Enable SSH. This will set up what is called a system D unit so that when uh, when the when the machine restarts the SSH or secure sockets secure shell, excuse me boots or starts up when the machine boots and so let's check the status here and we see that the secure shell daemon is running so we will now be able to connect to the Raspberry Pi over the network and we can dispense with the Mira box and the locally attached keyboard. But I think that's a good place to end it at this point. So we've taken a look at unboxing a brand new Raspberry Pi, one that came in the Kana kit or Kana kit, however you would like to pronounce it. We saw that those kits 
ship with an SD card that has the installer ready to go. So we assemble our device in a matter of speaking, insert the SD card, give it power, and it boots into an installation wizard, giving us the opportunity to select the type of software or operating system install that we want to do. We make that selection, it runs through its process, and then after it's done, we go through a few steps to change our keyboard layout, our time zone, enable connectivity via secure shell over the network, and ensure that the sh this sh secure shell daemon will run each time the Raspberry Pi boots. What I need to do next on the device is install a web server and a module for that web server that will provide the functionality that we will we will need for the uh, whole home audio controller in my parents house and we'll record that in the next step or the next video I should say hope you've enjoyed this one hope it's been useful and uh, as I say, you will see me in the next one.